Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, my friends, all across the globe today, yes. We are back with another episode of Sugar Pine. I apologize, I'm a little bit far away from the mic right now, just because I just want to make sure I'm not blowing anyone's eardrums out. But, of course, we are back here in Sugar Pine, doing what we do best, building for some goddamn animals. Yes, so today... We're kind of working on this bridge over here, and it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, this whole part of the speed build is pretty much null at this point. But you know what? I just get to show you guys what I did. Why not? Why not? So, of course, we are building today for the American Alligators. Yes, easily one of my favorite animals within the North America DLC. It looks absolutely beautiful. And, of course, we do a underwater build, well, underwater viewing gallery over here for them. And it turns out really, really nice. And, of course, guess what? We actually do an interior. Yes, we do backstage. I have finally caved in. I have finally been inspired by Rudy, Savannah, Zoof. I've been inspired by Leader, especially. Oh, my gosh. And we are finally getting that done. So, of course, with that being said, for the most part, we're actually just designing the rest of the habitat. For the most part, uh, relatively simple. I'm pretty happy with how well it came out. And I love what I did over here using the North African planks. Guess they're not really planks. They're more so, um, well, yeah, I guess they're planks, whatever. Using those big ol' arbor pieces to make that nice little f concrete texture of, like, kind of chipped off paint, kind of, like, dilapidated, I would kind of say. That's how I would kind of describe it. It turns out really good in the end. And I love this whole facade over here. Though the guests can't really view you view the um, animals through it, it still looks really cool after all is said and done. And here is that little nook and cranny where you can view the alligators from down below. We also have a spot from up above where you can also view the gators from. I think it turns out exceptionally well in the end. And I'm so excited for you guys to see the final product. And I do apologize, this one is a little bit of a longer speed build but you know what I know some of you guys actually love that stuff so you get even more leaf time with me today can you believe that well always over here um anyways I don't know sometimes I just keep on talking and I have no idea when to stop so of course over here I am working on the upper viewing gallery of course it's not really ADA compliant because we do have stairs but maybe down the line I could add a ramp in. I definitely want to have a sort of fixer upper episode right after we do the polar bears. And yes, those polar bears are coming. Hopefully later tonight I get to work on those or I'll work on the next episode of Capron. I really have no idea what I want to do. I've been like trying to play JWE. I've been trying to mod. I've been trying to do all this stuff and I have been feeling so uninspired recently. I have no idea what it is. I feel like we need a new DLC. Am I right in saying that? Am I right in saying that we need new DLC? Because I think damn well that we do. But you know what? With that being said, patience is a virtue. We're not really sure what we're going to get this time around. It's going to be like, you know, the big holiday DLC. Uh, I believe last year it was the Aquatic, I want to say. Maybe? Maybe Aquatic? I don't really remember. Or it was the Arctic way before. And that one really wasn't too big. So, you know, it could be European could be birds they could even surprise us with an antarctic pack i feel like that'd be a really funny thing to have and in fact that's gonna be this week's uh little uh speculation video so keep an eye out for that but with that being said here we are actually starting work on the actual holding facility itself just making sure it looks mighty nice and fine over here i opt for it to be something like along the lines of a white building at first but then it just looks so bad at the end, so I kind of do change it out so that it actually matches the rest of the red on this side of the build. Well, I say this side of the build, I mean this side of the park. And, of course, later down the line, we actually get that all fixed up and nice over there. I use these beautiful uh, go-away green fences. I forget who they're by, and I do apologize if you're watching this right now. I kind of want to say it's Toves. I could be entirely mistaken. Tobes is like an incredible builder. I have no idea how he does the magic that he does, but it's so beautiful. But with that being said, here we go on working on a lot more of the planted areas on the top of over here. And I actually do have some planted areas kind of separating the water from the rest of the pathway 
and I feel like it turned out really good because it's kind of like a green roof. You could kind of imagine that it's like an aquaponic system that like the water that the gators swim in and maybe even defecate in. It has like all those good old nutrients, you know, and it goes to feed the plants and stuff and they grow so beautiful afterwards. I don't know. I'm making this stuff up. Do I really know how botany works? Hell no. I'm a, I'm a Planet Zoo YouTuber. Am I really supposed to know all the facts about animals? Well, I guess I kind of have to because you guys correct me almost every other day. Uh, alligators are closely related to crocodiles. Uh, that's about the extent that I know. Now nah, I'm playing. You guys can tell the difference between alligators and crocodiles because alligators have more U-shaped snouts and crocodiles kind of come to more of a V, and gharials have long pointy ones. I'm getting really distracted right now, if you guys can't tell. I've not done a voiceover in such a long time, especially a speed build voiceover, or at least one that I can remember. But with that being said, here we go, working on the roof over here, making that stand out nice and well, and all these curves, I actually do change it out later down the line, just because they look kind of like dookie right there. Uh, maybe not the one in the corner over there. I think I actually changed that out for something else. But of course, when you're coming over here, uh, you really don't want to be under the hot, blaring sun all day, even though, you know, this is based in Maine after all. Uh, it gets pretty hot up in Maine sometimes. So I wanted to have this little viewing canopy over here, and I think it comes out pretty well in the end. And I use. A few little tricks in mind over here, use a lot, utilizing uh, those fence tricks, utilizing these, uh, ooh, I really do like how these came out. It's just like nice little viewing gallery glass, I guess, plexiglass, whatever you want to say, but it looks really nice in the end, and I actually do mess up, because I didn't copy all of it over, so I do fix it up in just a little bit, but I don't know, I just really like this little viewing gallery. And I think it should be visible from the guest perspective. You might see me popping in here once in a while, just checking it out from the guest perspective. That is something that I do very often. I usually just pop into the guest view as much as I can, just to make sure that what I'm building does make sense in terms of like the guests or even in terms of realism. Yes, that word took a while for it to come out of my mouth. But I do like to do semi-realistic builds. I am nowhere close to the levels that Zufar or, you know, all those Bronation builders, Eben. I am nowhere close to those guys, but I still at least like to take a little bit of inspiration. I'm very much a middle of the ballpark. Number one, you have people like Poison Blade doing like all these mystical, fanciful kinds of beautiful builds. Then you have me right in the middle of there, and then you have like all the realism, kind of like, po uh, not Poison Blade. Well, Poison Blade is starting a new project that looks very realistic, so keep your eyes out for that. But like Simply Savannah, Zoof, uh, I know Beyond Drew TV does those a lot, and I don't know, I just really like the middle of the ground. It just fits me so much better because I love doing, you know, hyper theming, I love doing some interior work. And it's just, I don't know, I, I can't commit to either one end of the spectrum. I gotta be right in the middle of there, guys. But with that being said, here we actually do start on the interior of the alligator house. I apologize if it's not the easiest thing to watch because it was kind of hard to build in here in such a cramped room. But I think it came out pretty good in the end. It was a pretty good idea to have a uh, alligator holding area. And it's not really the most, like, you would probably see keepers, like, moving the gators from one side of there to the other, just as a ways to separate them out when they're actually being held in here. I'm not sure if I had too many alligators in here, or too little. Uh, that's definitely something that I'm not entirely sure of. I probably should only keep, like, one or two gators in this entire zoo, but, you know what, it's Planet Zoo, I get to do whatever the heck I want. So with that being said, you can see me start to get the initial ideas for the walkway over here because the keepers should be able to have access to both sides of this entire facility. And I don't know, I just really do like how it turned out in the end, just making these stairs over there, adding in all these little bits of realism. 
and I actually do custom fences as well in here, so it's like, it gives you a nice clear view of the gators when you're actually in here. Say you're a keeper just doing your business over here, you can always keep the eyes on the gators, just in case if one escapes maybe, who knows. But with that being said, I just duplicate that all over the place. And I do separate these out into several different pens. I think we actually get four different pens, I want to say. Not entirely sure if I remember all too correctly, but we can definitely see it later down the line. And yeah, it's just basically winter storage for the gators, as well as backstage holding for when all the guests do go home and the gators have to pack it up and go back inside. But with that being said, just adding the rest of the fence around here so I could actually bring the gators in. And I do actually opt to keep one of the gators in the holding, especially like, you know, it just gives it a much better sense of scale as to what you're working with. And I love how these columns came out. It just feels like such a nice little building in there. I don't know. And the Galway green in there really does help to bring it up a notch. It really does help to feel like a very industrial kind of building. Like, they didn't really go too detailed with backstage holding, but I do add some murals in here, which actually do look pretty good. I don't know, that's pretty much all I got right there. Uh, any alligator stories I have? None really, I just really like alligators. I've had alligator meat before, if that makes any, if that makes any difference. Um, tastes like chicken, that's, that's all I can tell you guys. Oh, I add these little, uh, um, portals. I say portals like they're freaking like it's freaking valve. No, I have these little tunnels, not tunnels, doorways. There we go for the actual gators to co come out of. And I don't know, I think it's pretty cute. So I just mirror those on the other side and I make sure that they're able to climb out there or at least they're implied to climb out there. I think it looks pretty good in the end. Just as a nice way for them to get reintroduced into their habitats when, you know, the sun comes up and the gators come out, you know, that's how the saying goes, right? Who knows, maybe I'm just making stuff up. Uh, but with that being said, working on some rock work over here, doing some exterior work, as well as the underwater foliage, yes! We, how can we ever skimp out on the foliage, especially in the gator tank? We gotta make this feel just like a swamp, and that's exactly what I base this build off of. So I, well, not really base, but I dedicate it to um, both Beyond Drew TV and S. Dan Wolf. They just had a lovely little live stream today. Uh, shout out to those two gentlemen right there. I absolutely do miss them in the community, but, you know, S. Dan's doing his own thing with Planet Coaster, Drew's doing his own thing with work. I think he said he will be coming back to making content soon. That's going to be very, very exciting. And, yeah, that's pretty much that right there. So they kind of inspired me with this because they did have a series called Beyond Wolf Nature Preserve, which was a beautiful, beautiful swamp town. Oh, my gosh. It was literally the best thing to watch. Um, that was definitely, like, the golden age of Planet Zoo. I know, like, a lot of people describe that as different things, but that was definitely where I fell in love with the game and where, when I started making content, too, so it was pretty fun. But long story short, I do dedicate this entire exhibit to them at the end, it's, these alligators were given to us from the Beyond Wolf Alligator Farm. And yeah, so those are just pretty nice guys right over there. And what do I do over there? I just was looking for the excuse to put a sign over there. And I think I do just use like the alligator sign and one of lion signs. I've been using those all over this zoo. And lion, if you're listening, God, brother, I love you. Oh my gosh, thank you. You're literally making my builds. 10 times better with your signs alone. I know it seems like such a simple thing, but this zoo would not be the zoo that it is without those signs. Now, with that being said, we're doing a lot more foliage work all around the exhibit, just adding in those beautiful reeds. Oh my gosh, I've had a resurgence with those reeds recently. And here we go. Oh my gosh, this is my favorite part. So I make these leaf litters that I throw into the exhibit water and it just gives it a, like a little bit more storytelling. Like, you know, they haven't probably cleaned this exhibit in such a long time. So the leaves kind of gather up near the drainage 
and it kind of makes the water a little bit more murky. I don't know. I always love doing like little storytelling elements like that in my builds. It's always so fun and it really helps give builds so much more character. I don't know. I just, it's my favorite part of Planet Zoo, just telling stories without even words. With, yeah, without words and just using the environment and stuff to kind of make that come out right. And here we go, decorating the rest of the exterior of the alligator holding, uh, just making sure it looks pretty nice from the guest view. And I do use, like, I think I kind of just make that into a, yeah, I just use the uh, vent right there. Why not? You, we, we can pretend that they're, like, cooking meat in there. You don't really cook animal uh, meat. Well, technically, I guess you do, but meat for animals. There you go. But with that being said, adding all of Lion signs all around and just looking at my animals, I always love just checking up on my animals. They always look so nice in here. And yeah, here we go with the next part of the speed build, just doing a little bit of a rock trim right there. I don't know, I just always end up doing rock trims for underwater builds because, well, underwater viewing galleries, because that's what Roger Williams has. And I always just think of Roger Williams whenever I do underwater builds with, like, the seal habitat. That's immediately what I think of when I make underwater builds. And it's just, like, this beautiful use of faux rock and stuff. It's just so inspirational. And I don't know, I should probably go back to Roger Williams soon. I haven't been there in, like, a couple weeks. But with that being said, adding a little bit of lighting in here. Ooh, someone dimmed those lights. We got some mood lighting in here for our gators. And, yeah... They just enjoy it, and it looks very, it looks very industrial, very kind of spooky. It's a very Five Nights at Freddy's, I guess you could kind of say when you're like in there at night. But during the day, it looks pretty fine. You know, it's nothing too crazy. And here, here's my background. Yeah, um, not sure what happened there. Okay, cool. You guys got to see me sort my uh, desktop. That's awesome. Adding a little bit of a viewing kind of canopy over here. And originally, I did want to use Leiter's um, sails. Yeah, Leader, sorry. I did want to use his sails, but you know what? That ship sailed. Haha, <laughs> you get that? No, um, I really wanted to bring in the theming over here because while this is like one of the only Florida builds that, you know, we really have in here, I really want to kind of highlight the theming over here because the rest of the theming all around, it's pretty spot on with like the Alaska. It feels very much like a nature park. And of course the rest of our carnivores, it just feels like a nice mountainside retreat. And of course the opening is a little bit more like a harbor. But over here, what the hell was I going to do, you know? So I actually opted to do sort of like this beautiful viewing canopy with these kind of like trash pieces on top of it. Kind of like it's some makeshift bayou house kind of looking thing. And it looks so freaking spectacular in the end, oh my gosh. So you can see me try and like bring those sails in, but I said no against it. And I actually used these hammocks instead. And you can see me start to experiment with some other things, but I do settle on the hammocks and I just rotate them a little bit just to make sure it feels like, I don't know, feels a little bit different, feels a little bit more organic. And I do two different versions of that and I just copy copy and paste why not uh i apologize guys i'm like feeling a little bit sick my lips are dry as heck right now uh drier than a desert so right now i'm just feeling Ehh. so i apologize if my commentary is a little bit all over the place and if i do stop to lick my lips because i gotta do that like every five seconds oh my gosh someone listen listen <laughs> i'm not taking fan mail but if you have any burt's bees definitely hit me up but with that being said over here just adding the signage beyond wolf swamps was the original name for that but i do change that out for beyond wolf alligator farm adding i believe that's just goron's barrel up there always love using that it's always such a nice little piece adding these rose bushes those are my absolute favorites when it comes down to it and just generally dressing this entire place up i think it looks spectacular in the end especially when we have like those logs over there holding everything up adding that iron over there oh my gosh guys i love how well it looks and like the final view of this entire habitat is so freaking spectacular as well by adding some more windows up there just for a little bit more lore sake I guess you could kind of say I don't really know 
adding some picnic benches everywhere and some regular benches. I believe those are still by Mr. Andrew Wyatt, always doing some impressive stuff. And adding some more foliage, yeah. And basically the rest of this um, speed build, yeah, those are words. Good job, Leaf. Uh, the rest of the speed build is just going to be small little minor decorations going on everywhere. All the serious stuff is already done. And using this whole mulch technique that I kind of, I'm going to copyright that someday. Just using the mulch, slightly sinking it in and using the other mulch to kind of give it a little bit more of a natural path. Always love that technique. Always love doing that. It's always so fun. And of course, changing out the rest of the wood over there to make sure that this all flows and it all makes sense. And I have this little picnic section over here that you could look right into the bison habitat with. Uh, so just imagine chowing down on a burger and you got to see your meat right over there. Who really knows? I'm just making this stuff up as I go, baby. But, um, I don't know. I'm kind of tired right now. How are you guys? How are you guys doing? Oh my gosh, let me know how you're doing in the comments down below. I feel like I haven't checked up on you guys in a while. You guys could probably, like, you know, be passed out by listening to my voice. Listen, I know I'm very striking like that. But adding the rest of these benches over here, making sure that everything looks nice and beautiful. Adding some fences as well, just to kind of, like, protect guests from falling down those rocks over there. You know, that may be something that might happen. Uh, you know, guests can never really be the smartest tools in the shed, but we, we breed them good over here at Leaf's Animal Farm. This isn't Leaf's Animal Farm. Yeah, guys, I'm absolutely losing it right now. I don't know. Uh, adding those hawthorn bushes down there just for a little bit of a change in color. Adding some of these diamond leaf willows. I love using that for ground cover. It looks insanely good, guys. It's one of my favorite pieces in the game, honestly. White Sage is always bringing in a nice little twinge of blue and adding these, I forget what those ones are, who knows. And I also add these trees over here and they give like such a nice effect of height on the entire build. It just makes it feel so much better. And I kind of have like that little alligator etched into the rock, I feel like think that's pretty cute especially with like the surrounding area like the building itself I do wish I could have made into a little bit more of a swamp kind of looking thing those uh those are by Eben right there uh and I forget what the rest of these pieces I put down are from uh I do apologize once once I actually do finish up the build I will have like this little wall of donors and I will have everyone's like blueprints be referenced in there just making sure that i give everyone credit so do keep an eye out for that and adding the rest of these fences just making sure that this whole area is nice and locked off and adding these ones in again just kind of separate the staff pathing away from like the main path as well just making sure the guests don't really wander down the wrong path or otherwise they'll be inside the alligator house with like direct access to them we don't want that but with that being said that is pretty much the entire speed build oh my gosh i can't believe i made it through that let alone you guys i don't know i'm just very tired right now it's very hot in my room and i'm like dying of heat stroke but with that being said i do thank you guys so much for watching enjoy the rest of the b-roll it's not even here yet i'm just placing down some damn rocks but enjoy the rest of the b-roll have a wonderful day and i can't wait to see you guys in the next episode take care and enjoy the rest of your happy little days bye bye now mm -hmm.